Hello, my friends, and welcome to the No Holds Barred Witchcraft podcast. And we're talking about Willy's Wonky magic or something like that. Are we talking Willy Wonka? You wanted to talk about Willy Wonka, Chris, is that right? Yeah, I suppose. What I want to kind of talk about is because obviously with Willy Wonka, it was all about his magical chocolate factory and him having magical magical cre- creatures getting involved in his kind of mundane chocolate making. So right. what I kind of wanted to hit on. It was about it, slavery and it was about stealing, wasn't it? I trust you to go to the wokeness factor. Oh, no, I wanted, I wanted to avoid the wokeness and talk more about the kind of balance of that kind of magical and mundane. So I know we've done um, Venusian versus planet, uh, Venusian versus Mercurial, but now I'm kind of thinking we need to touch on finding that that balance between your magical practice um, you know, umpa lumpers and your actual mundane life. So making chocolate. Nummy um, nummy. Umpa lumpa doobidi do. Have we got a secret for you? Yeah, we have got a secret. We've got many secrets. What secrets are we going to give away, Mr. Chris? About magic in that. Well, I suppose we definitely need to start with my cautionary tale stuff, as usual, of reminding people that um, protection magic is pointless, um, which is what everybody focuses on when they first start out, because that's what all them books say, in it? When Stranger really... Danger. Huh? Stranger danger. Stranger danger. <laughs> Well, it should be Stranger Danger. In school, in the 90s, they had Stranger Danger, which was don't get into a stranger's car or anything like that when you walk home from school and stuff. Now, my friend who's a counsellor goes on and on and on about how they don't do that anymore. You shouldn't tell children that because most child abductions apparently happen by someone that the child already knows. So (laughs) saying Stranger Danger and getting them to be scared of strangers, actually they're more likely to be abducted by someone that they know, especially if that person they know owns a sweatshop, Mr. (laughs) So, how can we compare and contrast Charlie's, well, sorry, Mr. Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory? I suppose it was Charlie's one day. Well, it's eventually Charlie's, basically Charlie's now, isn't it? (laughs) But with the Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, where what did he do? Force these Oompa Loompas into servitude? I think the newer edition was they bribed them with the cocoa bean, didn't they? They are rare cocoa beans. But we can do a, this is basically a parody of what they did with diamonds, because diamonds apparently are a girl's best friend. Diamonds ain't worth what you think diamonds are worth. There are far more diamonds in the world. Basically, what happened was diamonds were a rarity. And then when they discovered more, a group of individuals of great power from the financial world and such, some would call them the Illuminati. Really, they're probably more like the accountants of the Illuminati. Um, They got together and they said, look, we've got more diamonds. Let's still restrict the flow of diamonds because otherwise the price will go down. And let's create this advertising campaign, right? It's going to be like a Christmas song and it's going to make us loads of money. But it's going to be better than a Christmas song. It's going to be this repetitive thing, this thing that is so ingrained within culture, it cannot get away. Do you know what this thing they came up with was, Mr. Chris? Um, Valentine's Day. No, you're very close, though. They came up with the idea that it is only acceptable to give a woman a diamond ring. Oh, yeah, for an engagement. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Many, many, many women ask and want diamond rings now for engagements and such. And that is a little bit of a marketing uh, magic. But no, I was comparing, sorry, Willy Wonka and the, what is it, Cruel 
subjugation of the Oompa Loompas with those children that you abduct put in your basement on the loom, do you know? Because we all know Chris has got lots of looms. They're working their way on the looms. How often do you go and check on them to bring food and water? Oh, I have somebody for that. Yeah, someone for that. Is it one of the other? It was. Is it one of the original children, like the earlier ones that have grown up a little bit now? That are basically they're kind of like there's that word, isn't there? I forget what it is. When you kind of grow accustomed to your your kidnapper. Yeah, your yeah. kidnapper. I forget what the term is. But you've got a supervisor, have you? A supervisor. Yeah, one that's slightly bigger than the others. Because they're a little bit older. Is that one hit puberty yet? Yes, I've been doing this a long time, Liam. Right, okay. Anyway. And then and the phrase you're after is Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm My brain syndrome. couldn't yeah. fo- focus then for a second. Well, the police do really need to send someone to your house to check the basement of your house because those poor, poor children. I mean, if I really cared about children, I might do something about it, but I don't. (laughs) Anyway, we're six minutes in and we've not discussed anything of substance other than the tricks of the diamond industry, these diamond geezers. So let's talk about whatever the fuck we're supposed to be talking about today. Willie's wonky magic, mundane versus magic this yeah. right a balance striking a balance which i think is important particularly for you know your everyday your normal everyday insta witch isn't going to have to worry about this because i'll never do any magic that really actually matters but the um those that actually want to have a real magical practice and start pushing up some of those levels leveling leveling up getting to those next next part their feet wet dipping their toes in yeah because that's what they do in it they dip their toes in and then they go and rent out one of those uh paddle boards <laughs> don't what? don't start again okay well come on then you're talking about willie's wonky magic is it about a grounding or something like that is that we were talking about mundane versus magical because it chocolate's quite good for that isn't it chocolate chocolate's good for grounding that's a new one on me grounding chocolate's good for yeah chocolate's good for grounding chocolate's good for um when you've done a possession work and you bring yourself back it feels a bit dry, tired and draining and stuff. Chocolate's good for that, yeah. It's good for trouble. That's, that's not for grounding, though, is it? That's for no, no, no. chocolate would also ground you. There's been quite a lot of studies and stuff done on processed foods and stuff like that, and how it, it basically makes you less psychic and such. So, if you all these people that are a bit ditzy that are kind of like, oh, I see the spirits and uh, wishy-washy types, you know, the new age types. Really what they need to do is stop doing yoga and they need to start eating chocolate. Because at the end of the day, who likes chocolate and pies? The neo-pagan community, you can tell. Well, just look at them. And who are the least psychic? It's the neo-pagans, isn't it? So... <laughs> The ones that eat the most chocolate and sugary treats and stuff seem to be the less psychic, right? So it must close off the third eye, surely. Okay, so what you're basically saying is it's another one of your conspiracy theories for the Illuminati that they made chocolate popular for... Um, the ladies, because we know the ladies are naturally more psychic than the boys. So um, they basically made chocolate a girl's best friend after diamonds and then made you get hooked on it as early as possible. I did not think that, no. But if you'd like to <laughs> add that conspiracy to the part, we can. Shall I email David Ike and say, look, David? Yeah, David, you're missing some well. points here. This is really what's going on. It's about <laughs> Willy's wonky chocolate. And who is Willy Wonka? Who is Willy Wonka? The Yahweh. The real life Willy Wonka is. The Yahweh. 
It's not with Willy Wonka. <laughs> I thought that the real life Willy Wonka is Angus Thurwell. Thur 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 I can't never say his name. The CEO of Hotel Chocolat Gremlin and chairman uh, okay. of the board of the Illuminati. It's uh, all about chocolate. If anyone, if anyone had a chocolate factory that had Umpalumpas chained up making things, it would be it would be him. But I could believe. I don't think it'd be him. It's, it's going to be whoever owns Mondelez, surely. Well, I don't know. I think they just employ slave labour from other countries, don't they? I don't think... Angus is crazy enough to actually go on an expedition to find Oompa Loompas, right? Whereas okay. other people just nice. enslave third, third, third world countries, the populations of third world countries, you know? That's nowhere near exciting enough or magical enough. Oh, Okay. But no, teach us something about chocolate or grounding or whatever it is you want to talk about. Mundane versus, because I'm presuming that was what it was, mundane versus magical. Or is that comparing and contrasting the, the people that like to sit on their asses and watch Coronation Street, various other soap operas, versus the people that go out into the woods late at night? Not the ones that go dogging, the other ones in the cloaks. <laughs> <laughs> no, what what I wanted what I wanted to make sure we focus on covering is making sure that people aren't spending all their time trying to build practice, uh, you know, uh, protection magics and warding. Although warding is useful when it comes down to different kinds of pr practice, kind of making sure the goldfish bowl has a good seal on it, you know, to is is kind of what warding is for, uh, which is what people don't kind of think of. They don't think of warding as their kind of early warning system or the seal on the goldfish fish bowl when they're pouring in interesting waters from somewhere else. Um, they think of the word, they use the word protection, and the word protection doesn't really do, do it justice. The word protection for me is like building walls, um, and hoping that's going to keep everything out um, and kind of creating a little tidy hole or a fort, um, one of those blanket forts that they like children like to make in the in the garden and thinking that's going to protect your practice um, when your most effective effective way, methodology of doing that is is going to be your kind of regular grounding and cleansing which is why we make so much a fuss about that, um, is that it, the more integrated that is into your daily practice so that it is um, second nature is more important than trying to learn protection magics. Um, mainly because anywhere you go in any book that you read, um, protection magic is such a wishy-washy subject that no one ever really focus on focuses on anything other than shielding. Is that the word they like to use, or am I thinking of who am I thinking of? They, they talk about shielding, and then they also talk about that word I can never say, anthropotraic, apopotraic, something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. They talk about like charms and things like that. Most of the books are like, oh well, you you know, you notch this into the wood, or you do this, you know, thing to protect yourself from witchcraft, or you know, bury this witch bowl, or do this, do that. It's kind of very craft with the magic taken out because they say they they make speculations about how it's done. But this is the problem. This is the problem that a lot of students always come to us. The reason why they come to us is because no one seems to talk about how the magic bit works. It's like, yeah, you can paint fucking glittery bottles all you like. You can go and do that at the uh, at the local community centre, the day where they get all of the children in and stuff like that. You know, like those books. I mean, yeah. I am not being funny, but these books, which is like a, a hundred thousand um things to do in the school holidays you know a thousand arts and craft products or something like that those big books that you see 
that basically means this make a paper mache bowl and paint it type situation. Really, a lot of these spell books are no different than that. I mean, they really are. I mean, at least you could get the book from Llewellyn or whatever. You know, you could even buy some of these fancier ones from like Troy books or something like that, you know, which are like combinations of actual charms and things like that that have been used through the ages. But they don't teach you the magical bit. And if they don't teach you the magical bit and they just give you a charm or just go and tell you to piss in a bottle and put nails in it or something, I think those a thousand projects to do in the holidays books are probably better because at least they've got pictures of how you make the bottle or how you actually make the thing, mm -hmm. you know? So if you're not putting the magic in it, you may as well show them how to make it, like give step-by-step -step instructions or something. But I don't know. Is that what, uh, what would that be classed as? I always class it as the science of magic or the mechanisms of magic. But some would say that's a more occult philosophy, like Agrippa had his three books of occult philosophy. And that's closer into getting into, well, this is how this works. You know, this energy here, there's these energies. This is how some of it works. I mean, it's not quite to the extent that we do. You don't give him a fucking triangle, does he? And say, this means this, that, do that. And then there's the beer at the end, right? Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I suppose I suppose it is more an occult philosophy um, than it is to be kind of science. I feel like science, the science of witchcraft is far more practical. Um, and although this is get, trying to encourage people to be more practical about it, and we're not saying this is what you must do, which I think is what, if it was a science of magic kind of discussion, then that's what it would be, wouldn't it? It'd be actually talking about A plus B equals 94. Um, you know, whereas actually what we're talking about is a healthy magical hygiene is what is needed in order for you to have a safe practice particularly if you're going to be operating up and down. Um, and I think what tends to happen is people who have busy lives forget the most. So if you've got, you know, young children or, you know, um, a stressful job that kind of feeds into your evening uh, when it shouldn't, those sorts of things that have no boundaries, mm. I find tend to have messier magical practices because there's no boundaries and what they don't learn is is about setting them so kind of going okay this is where my this is where my magic goes on um this is where i clean myself this is where um i put magic into my morning so you kind of like people find excuses for not practicing and their excuse is always i don't have time um whereas actually if you kind of find that balance between magical and mundane a lot um, more practically then you'll find that actually you're more powerful when it comes to actually practicing because that's what slows people down is that people don't practice enough so when they come to do spell work it's it's hard work mm. um, whereas it shouldn't be that you know we're still talking about basic practice here of kind of going, oh, okay, well, now I'm going to go and summon such and such, or I'm going to go and do a, an in-depth reading into the um, the financial market. Like, and they, yeah, find those, they find those things big lifting, and those things aren't big lifting, they're small magics. But ultimately, in order to be doing those small magics that they consider to be huge, they're huge because they don't practice enough. They don't use those muscles, um, you know, and I think we've compared this to kind of, you know, Olympics before, haven't we? And kind of personal trainer point of view of kind of going, you need to be using those muscles regularly enough so that when you come to lift something heavy, it's not so heavy to you. Whereas, you know, if you stop practicing suddenly, you'll see that deterioration quite quick. Um, and the best way for people to actually have that regular contact, I think they think we need them to cast a spell every week. 
And that's not what we're talking about. I think we need to go right down to basics and say, well, actually, where is your, what do you do first thing in the morning? Do you add magic into your coffee or your first cup of tea when you start in the morning um, or your OT breakfast? Are you actually engaging in those things in that in that kind of morning state? Are you making sure that when you're brushing your teeth at the end of the day or in the beginning of the day, that those cleansing mechanisms are occurring? You know, like, are you putting magic into those mundane parts of your life in order to make sure that you are consistently consistently that consistently practicing why couldn't i say that that was really hard i couldn't get my tongue around it you need to be consistent consistency is incredibly important like jk Rowling says uh, harry potter does his morning cleansing <laughs> harry rubs the wand to make the magic happen <laughs> <Alakazam>. <laughs> Wow. Oh, oh dear. Disgusting. You've triggered me, Chris. You've triggered me. Disgusting. Um I'd rather was, yes. So yeah, so kind of I think it doesn't get talked about enough. And when you talk to people about it, it should be second nature. It should be something they do all the time. Because that then means you don't have to do specific you know special warding left right and center if part of your daily routine is making sure those things are done means that those things will generate those spaces if you that kind of routine is what makes that work but people don't think about it enough to actually get into a habit there are ways of adding you know the right um ingredients into their shower gel and their hair shampoo um, or their daily hand wash. They also don't think about dosing the rest of their family, um, you know, making sure that they are protected when they're doing the bigger work because they're not the people that are likely to have their daily cleanses. So if you make them available in their breakfast or when you cook their dinner um, so that they are actually getting that kind of nutritional value magically speaking in order to mean that actually when you fuck up and they've f botched a big spell and that that smell is hanging around for days afterwards that it's not affecting your entire family um you know like that's the thing that um you know I don't think they think about enough because actually if they were doing all this anyway, um, rather than doing their kind of standard protections, because that's what they call them, don't they? And who do my protections? Yeah, but what are you protecting against? Because a protection is quite specific. Negativity, Chris. They're protecting against negativity that's why so many of them have had to cut you and me out of their lives because we're too negative Chris oh okay is that what we're doing they've got to be surrounded by positivity they don't do negativity nor do they do nativity nativity the evil Jesus oh sweeping over and destroying their paganism of their ancestors Don't know where I'm going with this. I'll tell you where I'm going with this. Fuck it. Let's give stuff away. Super magically important things that no other person seems to be talking about, right? Obviously, we've only got about five minutes left of the regular edition of the, of the podcast. So what we're going to do is we're going to speak in code and we're going to talk to you in code because last week, People really loved the code, I think. <laughs> so this week, we're going to add a little bit of code. But then don't worry, we will break the code and dissect it on the Patreon. So let's see how many of you people can follow along with what's going on. Follow along, what's going on, Chris? That almost kind of rhymes, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So 
you want to talk protection is that right and cleansings and stuff like that is that what this wonky chocolate factory podcast is all about the wonky chocolate factory is all about making sure that your balance is there so less about protection more about cleansy cleansy groundy stuff okay now how do people protect themselves in the mundane world we're talking just mundane because condoms I, hobnobs did you say condoms condoms that is a form of protection yes mr Chris. right you see this is the problem that i'm seeing with some magical practitioners some magical fuckwits would think i know what to do i'm gonna make me a giant energetic condom and roll it over my head not the little head chris like the big head their astral head all over their body and like being a little bubble they talk about like being in the astral egg this this magical fuckwits in a, in a magical condom right now in the mundane world we need to think that we take precautions for protection and such for specific reasons and those specific reasons generally speaking are ones that we understand even if they're ones we only understand a little bit now there are some forms of protection that we do take in the mundane world that we do not understand the reason for it but we put our trust in others right so if you go down in a mine and there you as i've done recently going down in the mine like big pit in wales right and you've got to take off your watches and your phones and all of that sort of stuff they tell you you've got you're not allowed to take any electronic equipment down the mine i don't fully understand why but it's got something to do with some sort of chemical reaction or something that can end up making the whole fucking thing blow up i don't fully understand it but i put trust in the person that's telling me the miner you know oh don't take that down the mine right let's think about things that we do understand because it's not something that all mundanes have understood from birth but they've grown up learning things so the first thing that we do is we tend to wash i know this may be hard to believe in the neo-pagan community that some people wash every day but it's true chris you wash every day don't you well wash parts of me every day parts of you every day i wash myself every day right is is getting rid of all of the bacteria and washing the body and stuff like that right because there's a bacteria festering and stuff hygiene is super important because bad hygiene is a breeding ground and environment for, for nasty funky shit to go wrong with your body and your environment and such right it, it, it escalates hygiene from an energetic perspective of course is going to be the same what other things do we do to protect ourselves because that's the form of cleansing and washing but in terms of protection people will often think self-defense well one of the most smartest ways to protect yourself is to think about the future to think about things that you understand that could go wrong and trying to stop them from going wrong so if you're getting attacked on the way home from a pub why not leave that pub with friends safety in numbers right why not leave that pub before chucking out time where all of the junkers get thrown out and that's where the majority of fights and muggings and troublesome things happen right chucking out time when the pubs close right why not think about let's let's change this journey home let's take a preemptive put some actual thought and we'll go with that you know rather than oh i'm gonna start carrying knives around with him no let's not let's see if we can avoid the situation in the first place so magical hygiene physical hygiene is about avoiding getting it contamination and disease and being generally skanky in general you know taking a different route home that doesn't go through the back alleys that stays in the street lights where there's lots of people milling about is preemptive right a lot of people when they think about defensive magic they think i need to defend myself from a physical magical attack and such actually it begins before that so that's it for the regular edition of the no holds barred witchcraft podcast